If there was one Achilles heel on the BMW N54 engine, it was the fuel injectors. It took them 12 iterations to finally get this part right, and I got them. I found them in a junkyard finally, Index 12s. We're gonna install them, we're gonna code them, we're gonna do everything in this video. Let's get started. Yeah, after stocking all the 535s and 335s showing up in my junkyard, I was finally able to get there first, and they were Index 12 injectors, and I got them off of 535. So it was really great. Very inexpensive when you get them from the junkyard like this. Now, uh, they are used and that's not such a big deal to me. I do know of an injector cleaning service that I could send these off to and basically get them clean for between three and $400. But I don't know that I need to do that yet. I'm just gonna go ahead and install them. All it really costs me is a little bit of time, these decoupler rings and these injector seals. And they were not that expensive. So if I have to do it again, if I have to take them out, send them off and do it again, not a big deal. So that's, we're just gonna install them in this video. Um, yeah, so you can, these are pretty expensive. It's, it should cost about, they're about 200 bucks each in today's prices. So 1200 bucks, maybe a little more than that since the pandemic. So uh, yeah, do your research, you'll, you'll, you should be able to find them. My problem was I couldn't find them in stock anywhere. So it had to be junkyard for me. Now you are going to need to replace the decoupler rings. These rings are, they fit, along here and they sort of act like a, a little bit of a spring to sort of gi give the injector some cushion um, from the engine vibrations. If we didn't have this, the thing would kind of pop out and it's critical that it stays in there and, and keeps that seal going. You wanna change these. Um, don't, uh, if you're <laughs> getting used injectors like me or if you bought new injectors and they didn't come with it, don't reuse your old ones from your existing injectors, buy new ones. Uh, that is the part number and it will be in the description. You also need new injector seals, part number there, also in the description. New seals. We're gonna cut the old ones off and install new ones. Let's talk about special tools. You are going to need a K plus DCAN cable in order to code the injectors. I'm gonna talk about that in a bit, but just go ahead and buy this cable off of eBay. And if you can, get one that has this built-in switch uh, because what this does is it, it bridges pins, I believe it's pin seven and eight together, or you know takes them apart. Um, and just depending on the year of vehicle you have, you might need to either pin them or depin them. So um, it's just good to get a cable that has that because it's just more versatile. And you need this, you don't, I guess you don't absolutely need this tool. Of course, there's hacks out there on how to do this without the special tool, but I buy the special tool when it comes to things like this. This is a whole tool set for installing injectors and what it is is there's three dies that are progressively smaller and you're going to fit the injector in there with the seal and it's going to compress the seal and then it'll compress it even more and then the final one's really hard you got to get it in there it'll compress it all the way and when you pop it out then you got to install it somewhat immediately it also has this which will uh this will hook down onto an injector this side hooks to here this screws down onto the injector and you can kind of do this. It's like a little slide hammer for pulling the old injectors out. You don't always need that. I, I haven't needed it when I've done this in the junkyard when I've pulled some injectors, but I guess every now and then you might get a really tough one. So two different screws depending on, not even sure what, but <laughs> two different screws. And this tool is a tool for getting the old injector seal off. It's gonna sort of compress the seal, deform it, and it lets you sort of cut the thing off. So we need that tool that makes things a lot easier as well. So yeah, I get the kit. Oh, not to forget this thing. This will fit on the tip of the injector like that, and it lets you slide the new seal on and, and expand the new seal so it just slides right on. Without that, really hard to do. So the trick that I was talking about was <laughs> you have seen some people, you know, use a Bic pen to kind of scrunch it on there and compress the seal and all that stuff. I'm not going to mess with that. That just seems a little, a little funky to me. Plus, uh, hard to get that seal on without this little tool as well. So I would not go for that. I would not do that. I'm just, I, I got the kit. I'm going to link to this kit down in the description if you're interested. A bunch of different uh, companies make this. This one's made by CTA. One quick note, you also need the INPA software and that always comes with these cables. The Chinese sellers just send you a CD-ROM with INPA on it and you can install it. If not, you can just do a search on the forums for, uh, search for BMW standard tools. 
And you know, there's a, there's a blog post out there. I'll find it, I'll put it in the description that contains all the instructions for how to set BMW standard tools up, which ha comes with, uh, which has INPA and all the other tools that you might need if you're getting into coding. Speaking of coding guys, we're gonna need to take note of these two numbers down here, the 573 and the 217. Each injector is gonna have different numbers and these are basically correction numbers that, you know, cause the manufacturing tolerances on this are not identical on everyone. It's just, they can't get it that perfect. So they produce one, they produce these and then they test them afterwards and they come up with these, these numbers that let the engine computer make an adjustment and dial dial the settings in for each, that particular fuel injector. So when we install these, that's why we have to code them. We have to enter these numbers into INPA that goes into the engine computer and then the engine computer knows exactly how to operate the injector correctly. So we need to write these numbers down and which cylinder we installed that, this particular injector in and that way we know which cylinder to enter in INPA. Don't worry if you forget this, it is possible to look and see what the numbers are after they're already installed, I've done it. So not really a big deal, but write it down ahead of time. So what I'm gonna do here is this will be my number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'll take a picture. Guys, this is gonna be a long video, a lot of different sections, a lot of information. I've put all the timestamps down below, so check it out and skip to the section that you're particularly interested in if you don't wanna watch the whole video. So I decided to also write down the numbers here just as a, as a precaution. So <clears throat> this tool, pretty simple. We're just going to see the, the tip rests on that white part right there. And all you do is just sort of squeeze and you see how it sort of deforms the, the little thing right there. So I pretty much did that. And then I use like a little pick tool to sort of uh, pick it all the way off like that. See, just kind of cracks it most of the way. So I'm just going to show you how to do this on one injector. Just do everything on one injector. You're not going to see all six because it's all redundant. So we're just going to do one here. We cut one seal off and I'm going to show you how to install one new seal using this little tool. So do that like that. And So yeah, they say don't use your fingernails, but I don't really know any other way to kind of slide that thing on there. So I suppose they're telling you that just because they don't want you, your fingernail to tear the seal. So just be real careful, which I was. So now what we do is we take the biggest die and you'll notice that it's bigger on one side than on the other. You want to start on the big side and you just sort of force it on and that sort of compresses it initially. That's the first compression step. This one, this side's smaller than that side. That's the big side. So this one, see it's a little harder. Boom. But we got it on. I guess you leave it there for a little bit. I've done this once before with one other injector. Not complicated. I'll do that. Maybe do it again. Make sure that it's kind of good. Nice and compressed. Okay. Now, this one is the hard one. Here's the big side, there's the small side. This one was really difficult to do, I recall. Oh, a little easier this time, I, I think. Oh, very cool, see? A little easier to compress at that time. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna set all of these up and I will just sort of recompress each one as it's going into the car. But I wanna install, at least get all these seals installed right now, so yeah. Not too bad. I think that the, the trick there is to just run each die on a couple of times, make sure it's nice and compressed. So now we can just install the new decouplers just like that, just slide them on. So guys, I know it's real tempting to clean the carbon off the tips of these things if you're using used injectors, but don't do it. The BMW technical information system specifically says not to do that. Uh, because you could cause some of the carbon to, to kind of go into, because the tip of this thing, you see the little circle right there, the, the little tip there, that comes out. That when the, when the injector opens, that comes out. So it is possible to kind of shove a little bit of the carbon in there, 
that'll that'll jam it open and it'll cause it to leak and that is what happens to these injectors they get clogged and they leak over time and supposedly they also leaked because of internal defects with the old indexes and they finally fixed that supposedly in index 12. that's why we're installing them so these are good to go let's get them installed on the car we're going to have to remove the wiring harness from the cowl the cabin air filter assembly and the cowl itself to remove the wiring harness you get a little screwdriver stick it in right here and right here and that will pop it out this one you can choose to unsnap these clips right here you can also it's a little bit more involved but you can also push down on the little thing inside there and inside there and that'll pop the plastic housing out as well you can do it either way remove the six eight millimeter fasteners here here and there and remove the cabin air filter assembly on the left side of the engine remove the wiring harness that's clipped in here set that aside and remove this cover here by lifting up on either side of these clips unhooking the, the rubber from right there and then remove this eight millimeter fastener on the right side remove the wiring harness from the air quality sensor it should be clipped in right here you can pull that up and then there's another clip right here same thing as the other side lift up on these tabs to remove the cover and then remove the eight millimeter fastener there are two more little rubber things clipped to the side of the cowl now you can lift the cowl up and out of here to remove the engine cover there are four five millimeter allen bolts at either side there's one hiding down over here just lift this up and out now we need to remove this cross brace right here it's an e14 over here and there's a cover right here that you either have to pop off or turn to the side with a large screwdriver and that covers an e18 which you don't have to remove all the way you just have to loosen it now you can pull this right out all right, now I'm going to go pull the fuel pump fuse and start the engine and let the thing run until it dies and I'll do it again. We want to basically depressurize the fuel system that way we don't have to deal with fuel spraying everywhere when we disconnect the fuel lines from the fuel injectors. So you got to get into your glove compartment. You got to pull the little uh, door down so you can get to the fuse box. And the fuel pump fuse is going to be right there that's where the fuel pump fuel fuse goes where the missing spot is it's actually a 20 amp yellow fuse and you just got to pull it out with some long needle nose all right the fuse is pulled let's try to start it pretty much died right away let's do it one more time to make sure see it started just a little bit let's do it one more time ah there's still a little residual in there you know one more time <laughs> all right all right i think it's good now easy as that now we got no mess when we take those fuel injector lines loose okay last time i did this in a video i during the valve cover video i used a flare nut wrench um, just because i wasn't sure how tight these things were on there and that's pretty much the proper tool to use but i know these aren't that tight and i know a normal wrench is going to be just fine so 14 mil gonna break that loose and I do see a little, little tiny whiff of fuel leaking here. So let's just get this towel here just to make sure nothing squirts at us. Let that go. Do the same down here. Let's go in from this side. Yeah. So of course, I mean, there's residual fuel in the line, just sitting in the line. Pressure might be bled down a little bit, but the fuel's still there. So you can take that one off. Now, the first five of these, these lines are all the same, so it doesn't matter. The last one is different. The number six one's different. And that's it. So I'm just going to loosen them all off and, and get them all off. Incidentally, if you are not going to uh, do it this way, if you're just going to put the towel over it and, de you know, let the fuel pressure out that way, 
do not forget to disconnect your battery because the fuel pump likes to prime at random. So if you have this thing, uh, if you have one of the lines off and the fuel pump primes, the thing's going to shoot fuel at you. So make sure you disconnect the battery in that case. Me didn't disconnect the battery here because the fuel pump fuse is pulled. So quick story, guys. Uh, I have been having issues with uh, misfires on this vehicle, and it's all been due to the um, the cylinder six injector. I have index tens on one through five and then an index seven on uh, cylinder six. And I know that that one was leaking because um, at some point when I was doing my whole valve cover videos and stuff, um, this engine was sitting for a little while and I pulled out the plugs to inspect and I could see that number six plug was very wet. So that pretty much confirmed that the number six um, injector was leaking. I also had previously gotten misfires on the number six cylinder. So all that evidence added up to, yeah, that index seven injector was bad. And what I did was I went ahead and installed one of the index nine injectors that I had pulled from a junkyard previously. But I decided, okay, I'm just gonna swap that. I was gonna do it off camera just to kind of get that problem taken care of because I was tired of the misfires. And I did that and it worked and it was fine. I also just wanted to get some experience with doing all the, you know, everything, you know, off camera. I always prefer to, you know, get a little bit of experience with something first before I make a video about it. So I did that, that did solve the misfires. And now we're just upgrading to index 12s just because I have them and they're better. So to get this connector off, all you do is you pull backwards like that. By pulling back, you just sort of gently dislodge whatever the thing is that's, that's holding it in when it's clicked in. And that's it. So you can just very easily pull back and get those out of there. Now, the next step is going to be to get off an E E10 sorry fastener down here that's holding a little this little metal plate that's holding each two, a pair of injectors down. But I can't get this right down on top of it because this is right in the middle, right in my way. So I have to loosen those ground clamps just a little. That way that can pivot to the side. Now we can get down there, loosen it. Ooh, this thing needs new battery. Yeah, it does. <laughs> there we go. So reach down and get that out of there and get the little guy out of there. If it's like that, the, the bevel goes up and it's going to be tricky to get it reinstalled, but that's kind of how it goes. And that's what's clamping the injectors down. Now to get an injector out, you typically can just sort of rock it around like this and it'll, it'll pop out. We want to make sure that there's no debris that's really going to fall down in there. So let's see if that works here. Yeah, that worked easily right here. Came right out. So there's our old index 10 injector. And because I have the tool, we might as well demonstrate it. So we're going to thread this guy on like this all the way down. And then you do that and it slide hammers the old one out of there. But shouldn't be necessary on this job. You know, just because I've been having a little tendonitis lately, I'm gonna use it. Got the tool, might as well use it. There we go. Now, let's see doesn't want to really come out very easily. Yeah, but still easy. This was my newer one. Now that one's a little tighter. I suggest you do not try to clean anything. Just if you see a lot of debris in there before you pull the injectors out, blow it out with an air nozzle if you have that. Otherwise, don't try to clean down in there because you're just going to end up shoving dirt down in and you don't want that. So each injector is going to get recompressed a final time. I actually didn't compress the O-rings yet on all the other ones. But this one, we'll get a recompression. And then we're going to put it in. We're going to try not to touch the sides as we slip it down in there. Make sure it's seated. And that is it, guys.
So you want to make sure that you install the injector within about 60 seconds of taking that final die off. Otherwise the seal could start to re-expand and then you really won't get a proper seal. So this is the not so fun part, the tricky part, getting this guy in there and set in the proper position is difficult because you have to sort of get it in there and flip it over and probably a pick tool is ideal. Let's see if I can just use my fingers. Yeah, that's easy enough actually. If you do it that way, <laughs> just kind of get it where it goes. Put the bolt in there. Ah, see the bolt made it fall over. That is the tricky part. So I'm gonna block you just, just for a second so I can get this started. I'm just going to tighten it for now. We'll torque it on properly afterwards. So I'm just going to get the other ones on. Aha, this one's being difficult just because it's so far over. You guys are in my way. The torque on these is 13 Newton meters, give or take just a little bit. And in my case, that was just an extra little bit of a turn. That one was fine. You don't really need a torque wrench to do this. It's just get it snug. Snug's good enough. All right, let's get our lines, our fuel injectors plugged in. Now our fuel lines can go back on. Incidentally, another way to get, you know, fuel injectors out if you're absolutely in a pinch, maybe you want to pull them in a junkyard is you can use this as a handle. Uh, maybe I wouldn't do that on the ones on my car, but in a pinch. Okay, I'm going to counter hold the injector with a 13 while I tighten the line. The 14. Cool, man. All right, I think we're ready to code these injectors and then we can start the engine and make sure everything's all good. First, let's go pu uh, plug the fuel pump fuse back in. All right, guys, we are in INPA. I have the KD CAN cable plugged into the OBD2 port in the car nice long extension, and I have the ignition turned on. As you see, we've got cable found yes and ignition on yes. If these two dots aren't black, you know something's wrong. So we're going to hit F2 or hit right here for E90, select engine, and then I'm gonna select the N54 and double click. Now we are going to go into system functions, which is F9. And then we want this EOL injector rate comparison, which is shift F4. So I'm gonna use the keyboard for that. And now we're in here. So now you see there's this 58.2. That's the first number on the injector. You notice how I wrote down like 575, 573. It's actually 57.5 or 57.3. And then the second number is, you know, I wrote down 197. That would be 1.97, as you see. So we're going to just go injector by injector, and I will put in 57.5 there, 57.5 and 1.97. And it'll take it. And you see how right here on injector number one, I put in 1.97, but it changed it to 1.95. It's going to do that. It, it sort of rounds it to the nearest, you know, whatever values that it uses. So. We're just going to do that. We'll go through and input all the values. That's it. We're just going to review the changes. 
make sure everything's right. Yeah, looks good. Now we're going to do Shift F10 to finish it. And we are good. Might as well go back in there and make sure that it took our values. F9, Shift F4. Yeah, looks like it saved all of our values correctly. That's it, man. Just go back and back and end. That's all we got to do. All right, guys, time to start the car. See how she sounds. Make sure there's no leaks. Man, those are super loud. They seem fine, other than they seem kind of loud. Oh, a little quieter there. Man. I really want to get that engine cover on just because it's so loud. <laughs> All right, seems good. I'm going to shut the engine off. Wow, those are actually super loud, a lot louder than I was expecting. That's kind of disappointing. Hey, if anybody's watching, if you have index 12s or yours that loud, let me know in the comments. I'm interested. Anyway, uh, I'm really not going to know if this is solid and good until I do like I start this up from cold a couple of times and just drive it and see how it responds during like a normal week's worth of driving. So I'll def I'm definitely going to do that. But anyway, let's get it all back together because it's good to go. All right, just because I'm curious, I want to see what it sounds like with the engine cover installed and all that stuff. It was definitely a lot quieter from here inside the car. Yeah, it's definitely a lot quieter inside the car for sure uh, with the engine cover on and everything. So. I'm happy. All right, guys, that's it. Pretty easy DIY at the end of the day. Uh, not too expensive to do. The KDKN cable is, I think, around $15. And the tool for compressing the seals is probably about $100, bucks, but there's probably cheaper versions of that out there. Time will tell whether these Index 12 injectors are good. I believe that they are. Everything seems smooth, so I'll have to run them for a little while just to, to figure it out. And obviously, uh, when we do get into boosting the car, that's when we're really gonna be pushing the limits on these injectors. A lot of people tend to have problems when they uh, start to, to, to um, <laughs> give their car more boost. They start to install tunes and they're pushing things really hard and eventually they start to get, um, they'll, they'll start to get uh, a misfire while they're revving high. And that's a different kind of a misfire situation than the, uh, the, the, the misfire flutters when you're just starting the car up from cold start. So when that happens, um, I do believe that still the problem is that the, the fuel injector is clogged or dirty a little bit and sending it off to be cleaned is probably advised in those situations. So if that's the problem you're having, that's, uh, that's what you need to do. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Hopefully you're going to watch the next video because that definitely helps me out. I'm Jason, the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.